Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent of Gold, joining you on Friday the morning after Arsenal's first leg defeat in the Europa League semi-final away at Villarreal. Not a good night for Arsenal, not a good night for Mikel Arteta, but the one big positive, perhaps the only positive <laughs> to come from that performance is that Arsenal are still into the, in the tie thanks to that Nicolas Pepe penalty on 73 minutes, a crucial away goal but one thing is for sure Arsenal are going to have to play a hell of a lot better when they go back to, for, to the Emirates Stadium next Thursday night for that second leg so this video is mainly going to be about that game and some of the big talking points from it what Mikel had to say after the game but I just wanted to start this video to say that this is going to be the last video you see from me now until Tuesday I am going to be joining in the social media blackout that is uh, taking place from 3 p.m today until basically midnight on Monday night calling for an end for the online abuse that we are seeing on social media and calling for the social media companies to take part. Obviously all the big sporting organisations in England are doing this as a football organisation so you're not going to be hearing from Arsenal, you're not going to be hearing from anyone else um, and I feel it's only right that I, I join in on this because it's something that I absolutely want to see kicked out of social media. Something needs to change, the social media companies need to change um, and people need to be held into held into account for what they are posting. They can't be allowed to just post whatever they want and get away with it. So it's only a small thing, but I feel like I need to take part in this as well. So this is going to be the last video you see from me now until Tuesday. So apologies for that. Maybe you're happy, <laughs> maybe, you're, maybe you're not, but um, I will return on Tuesday with a video. But until then, you're not going to hear it from me, and it'll be the same on my social media channels as well. So on Twitter, Facebook, um, I will... Uh, be um be a silent so um apologies for that but i thought you should know why that is going to be the case okay let's talk about last night's game shall we um i think we're all up for this one it was we knew how important this was going to be we knew that arsenal needed to play well we knew given their home form they probably needed a positive result to take back to london from this one and uh they did not get it everything that we were hoping for they did not get they played awfully um like I said, they were very lucky to come back still in the game because this tie could have easily been over given their performance. Um, and it was just a bad night for everyone. It was a really bad night for Mikel Arteta, I have to say. Um, you know, I'm quite, I, I like Mikel and uh, I've been a supporter of his, but I think when he, when he does something wrong, you absolutely have to flag it up. And I thought last night he got pretty much everything he could have got wrong, wrong from the team selection to the substitutions to his in-game management just... It was just a bad night for him, potentially showing up just how inexperienced he is at this level. Um, and yeah, it was it was a difficult night. He, I mean, speaking after the game, he said, obviously, we are disappointed that we lost because it's not the result we wanted to take from the game. But after the story of the game, I think we have to take it because um, in the tie we are alive and in the circumstances that developed during the match, um, it put the game and the tie in real danger for us. And no doubt about it, it certainly did that. Arsenal found themselves 1-0 down after five minutes, 2-0 down after half an hour, down to 10 men. Just before the hour mark, and at that point, he thought, "Oh my God, this is going to be absolutely over." Bert Leno made a huge save from uh, Gerard Moreno, which would have made it three 0 And had that gone in, you think that really is tie over. But Leno, fair play to him, made a great, great save. And an Arsenal, a few minutes later, did get themselves a lifeline. Bakaya Saka tripped in the box. Nicolas Pepe scoring his eleventh goal of the season. Stayed calm, slotted it straight down the middle. And after all of that, Arsenal are certainly still in this tie and that is the one big bonus because like I said they could have been absolutely out and they would have had no complaints had they been out at the time because it was a disastrous performance the team selection was wrong um like I said the in-game management for Mikel it just it, none of it really made sense I mean we saw the team selection. You thought, well, Nicolas Pepe is going to play up front and I could have kind of thought you know I could un understood that but when the actual match started and you saw that they were playing with kind of Smith Rowe as the false nine or almost as two tens with Odegaard up front it was just like this just did not work it did not work at all obviously the fact they went behind early on didn't help and that's through everyone and Mikel talked about that as well he said that early goal he felt was the reason why the system didn't work but I mean can you really experiment in a European semi-final it did not feel like the time to try something like that I know that Orba clearly wasn't fit to start and Lacazette wasn't fit to even be involved 
but you've got Martinelli on the bench. Play him as a central striker if you want. Even play in Ketia if you want. Just at least play a central striker. To play two number 10s, I mean, the Villarreal defence will not have had an easier game than they did in that first half an hour, uh, sorry, first hour until Martinelli came on. And it was no surprise once Martinelli came on and went, played as a striker, Arsenal started to improve and they ended up getting the goal soon after. So it was a really odd decision, I felt, from Mikel Arteta and one that his team very, very nearly paid the ultimate price for. Obviously, it was a big talking point in the press conference after the game. Why did he do it? Um, can you explain what what it was about? And he said, "Look, it's the way we prepare, it's the way we've prepared for the game. It's a decision that I made, thinking it was the best way to play. But the game we can was conditioned after four minutes, so it's difficult to assess whether it'd work or not. Conceding from the set piece as well also changed it afterwards, and we had to approach it a different way. I mean, it's very similar." It was, it was kind of straight out of the Pep Guardiola playbook, wasn't it? We've seen it before. We've seen it what City have been doing pretty much all season with a whole false nine. But when, you got, when you're playing with a false nine, you have to have all your, play, your attacking players behind them with, you know, moving, pressing as one, getting up in support and causing the defence problems by having numbers. But it was nothing like that. It was just a big empty space where the forward should be. I mean, it was so easy for Villarreal to defend against. And... Um, and it just didn't work. And he continued, I mean, we continued to press him in the press conference afterwards. And he said, look, one of the main reasons it didn't work was that we conceded the goal and that disorganized, we disorganized ourselves in the high press. We were really stretched and we didn't have the right people in the right spaces. And then we were open. We didn't give ourselves a chance to even get set in the final third to do what we wanted to do because we were imprecise with the ball as well. Overall, it was not the best. We started the second half with the same players in a completely different way. We played with three strikers before and it didn't work at times this season. So it's a decision that I made and that's it. So... You know, he wasn't holding his hands up, admitting he got it wrong. He still felt it was the right decision. It was just the fact there were some factors in the game that it didn't work. But for me, it was a big mistake for Mikel. I feel like he tried to be a little bit too clever. And when you're in a semi-final of a European competition, when you're going into it with your confidence down as it is, um, like Arsenal had been with recent performances, I just feel it was just a step too far to ask him to play in that sort of way in a semi-final against a very good Villarreal side. It was just, yeah, just felt to me like Mikel got that one absolutely wrong. And it wasn't just that it got it wrong. I thought the left back, you know, I've said it before in these videos, I don't get the whole Granit Xhaka thing. I know he's done all right in that position at the time. He certainly got exposed yesterday. And the first goal came straight down that side. And it wasn't a surprise at all that Villarreal target that, targeted that area. Um, and like I said, I know he's done some, he's done well in some matches, but for me, it's just not, it's not something. Yeah, you've got Cedric Suarez there. Yes, he's a right back, but at least he's a left back. He even played Bukayo Saka there. He's naturally left-footed if you want a left-footed player there. Yes, he means you take Saka away from the forward line, but we saw last season he still gets forward time and time again in attacks from that position. We saw with his goals and assists playing there last season that he can still have a really real impact in the final third. To play Granit Xhaka there, he's a centre midfielder for a start, he's not a defender. You're hurting yourself in that regard, but you're also hurting yourself in central midfield because it means you haven't got Granit Xhaka in central midfield. And that meant you had to play Danny Sabahas yesterday. He's not been in a good run of form at all. And again, Sabahas got exposed yesterday, ended up getting himself sent off. So for me, that team selection was wrong as well. I just don't really understand it. Um, it just felt wrong from the start with that, that team from, from Mikel. It just didn't feel like the uh, sort of start in 11 that was going to cause Villarreal too many problems. And that is how the game unfolded. Obviously, Mikel was pretty defensive when he was asked about it after the game in his press conference. He's, he got pretty, I wouldn't say angry, tetchy, certainly. Some of the questions asking him, you know, straight out, did you get it wrong? And he said, look, obviously, when you lose, you always get it wrong. Um but I just don't think he can have too many complaints with people pointing the finger at him on this one. He got away with one yesterday, Mikel Arteta, make no mistake about that. I think if Arsenal had got out of the tie and lost 3 or 4-0, which they easily could have done, he would have been under huge pressure today because of his team selection and because of um, some of his in-game management, talking about substitutions as well. I mean, Danny Sabas, he was a walking red card. You could see it straight away. Got himself booked in the first half, was given a torrid time by Jan Foyth of all people. He was racing past him down that right-hand side, exposing Sabas's lack of pace. Um, Sabas got booked for tripping him in the first half and you just felt at that point, you've got to take him off. It was just looked like he was a walking red card. You knew it was going to happen. And at half-time, given the way the game had gone and given the fact Sabas was on that yellow card and really walking a tightrope, you thought, you've got to take him off. Don't send him out for the second half. But he did. And then he ended up getting sent off within 15 minutes of 
um, the second half. And it's just, again, it felt like a tight, it felt like he was too reactionary when it came to his substitutions, Mikel. And he's been like that all season. His substitutions are not great. You always get the feeling he, he waits a little bit too long. He doesn't make changes when he feels like, when it feels to everyone else like they are very much needed. I mean, no one would have complained if he made a couple of changes at half time yesterday and changed things, given the way that game was, given the way the game was heading and the performances. And certainly with Sabahis' performance and the fact it's on Nilo Carden. Just felt he got that one wrong as well. In terms of the left back position, a situation like I said, um, you know, I, I feel like Granite just shouldn't be there. It's hurting the team in twofold, both in terms of the left side of, and inside of, and in terms of central midfield. And um, Mikhail getting pretty touchy about that one again. He said, "Look, guys, when we won four 0 away from home against Slavia Prague, and they hadn't lost a home game in three years, and Granite played so well, he was incredible there. But I know that when it doesn't happen, it's always going to point there." Um, and that is he's just something he's got to deal with, Mikel. If it doesn't go right, he's going to get questions asked. And I think it's absolutely justifiable position um, uh, for journalists and fans to question his decision to keep playing Granite Xhaka at left-back. Like I said, you've got Cedric Suarez there, even Hector Beller in there. Yes, they're both right-sided full-backs, but you know, they, they can still, I, I feel like they could still probably offer more than Granite Xhaka does there. You play in Xhaka, like I said, you're exposing yourself so many different areas. You're basically robbing yourself of any overlapping um, positions from fullback because he doesn't do that. He just stays in the back four because of his lack of pace and lack of movement. You're hurting yourself because he's not a defender and you're hurting yourself in central midfield. It's just an experiment that for me has gone a little bit too far for one or two games perhaps, but to sort of continue it now until Tierney um, gets to full fitness, I just I don't understand that. And in a game as big as yesterday, as last night, you knew straight away that Villarreal were going to target that area and that's where they got a lot of joy from and where the first goal came from. Um, I mean, Martin Keown, who was obviously in the BT Sports studio yesterday watching the game, he talked about it. He said, um, when talking about Granite Xhaka, he said, look, it's the actions of a player that is not comfortable in that possession, that position, and it's the manager that has put him there. It's about the decisions of the manager. It's not Xhaka's fault. I believe he's most one of the most improved players we have this season. He's had a difficult time to play at left-back, um, and le- playing him there leaves him exposed for me. And Keown's spot on for me there he it is leaving him exposed and it's hurting the team and it's just a really odd situation I think the left back one and it's another one for me that Mikel is getting wrong it's a quite a depressing video this one isn't it I'm a bit so I apologize for that I know it's probably not exactly lightening your mood because I know wherever you're watching this around the world you've either w- woken up or whatever time it is and thought god did that really happen last night and but it's tough. It's like the way that performance went, the way the game went. It's hard to really look at the positives. Like I said, though, the one big positive that Arsenal are still in this tie, and you wouldn't put it past them going to win two nil next season, uh, next week at the Emirates. They're going to have to play an awful lot better than that if they are uh, going to go through. But I think again, one of the big positives. I don't think they can ever play. They will. They will be able to play quite as badly as they did certainly for the first hour last night. And you do think in that second leg, the positives also is that Kieran Tierney. Um, you would hope he's going to be back. He travelled yesterday. He was in Spain. The team is staying out there today and training, having an extra training session out there to get ready for the Newcastle game. So you think that Tierney is very, very close to playing. I think he'll definitely be involved next Thursday night in the second leg, especially when you consider Danny Ceballos is going to be suspended now. So that means there's going to be, a, you know, Granite surely going to have to move back into central midfield next weekend with Danny Ceballos injured. So I think, um, I think, Tierney will certainly play and you think Aubameyang will be very close to full fitness again he came on for a few minutes probably should have scored right at the end he had a golden opportunity to make it 2-2 right at the end he kind of slipped and he took the shot unfortunately really good play from Thomas Partey to set up that opportunity maybe Lacazette would be back as well so you feel like Arsenal are going to be an awful lot stronger next week in terms of the players they can select and that will be a big big boost in terms of Sabias, before I get on to my player ratings, difficult night for Danny Sabias. He's having a poor time of it at the moment. I think everyone's just waiting for this loan spell to end now, for the season to end, and for Danny to go back to Madrid. He had a really strong end to the season last season, but it's the complete opposite this season. He's really struggling, struggled again last night, really exposed to his lack of a pace and movement and um, in central midfield, got himself sent off stupidly um, last night. And Mikel was asked about it. He said, he said, look, I haven't seen... This was... a straight after the game so he said he hadn't seen it at that point but we talked at half time to say that we had to be very careful there was a tackle very early on in the second half and I was going to take Danny off but by that time get by the time Gabby Martinelli was ready to come on that action had happened and he was off unfortunately for Mikel there I don't really it's not really good enough reasoning that for that for me because I think we all saw 
during that game that Sabias was a walking red card and he should have been taken off at half time. It was just too late. He reacted too late, Mikel, in terms of the substitutions and not for the first time this season. Um, and yeah, Arsenal are going to be missing Sabias. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue next week that they're going to be missing Sabias. Like I said, you definitely move Granit Xhaka back in there uh, for me and Arsenal will be better off in centre midfield because of that. Okay, before I go today, player ratings time. Obviously, I didn't get time to do them yesterday, last night after the match. As you can imagine, they are not exactly sky high when it comes to the ratings. Bernd Leno, I'm going to give man of the match. For me, he gets a seven. Um, you know what? In fact, I'm going to give Bernd Leno an eight in the man of the match because he made some really important saves. And the one he made for Moreno was so huge. That's almost worth one and a half points on its own. Um, so for me, so I'm going to give Leno eight a man of the match. I mean, that save Moreno had that go game got that goal gone in. That's game over. Game set a match three 0 You don't see any way Arsenal come back from that. He made a really important save, and that wasn't the only one. He made a couple of others as well. He stood up well and play. There was a couple of one on ones, and he stood up and forced it forward out wide. So given he's been struggling a bit, uh, a bit of late, Leno, I thought it was a really strong performance. So credit to him for that. So he gets an eight man of the match. Then right across the back line, I'm going to give fives. Chambers, Mary, Holding, and Jacker. Um, just not the great performance from any of them, really. I think the fullbacks certainly exposed for not being fullbacks. I've already talked about Xhaka, but again, I still feel like that, um, Callum Chambers is, although he's done fairly well since he's come in at right back, I still think for me should be playing Cedric Suarez over there if rather than uh, Callum Chambers. Um, so all of those guys get five. Danny Tobias gets a three. Probably fortunate to even get a three if he had given a torrid night. Um, actually, for the first 10 minutes, I thought Sabas was all right. And then suddenly it all went absolutely downhill for him. Ended up in the red card. So he gets a three. Party gets a five. Again, Thomas Party just doesn't look really fit for me, Thomas Party at the moment. He just seems to be lacking a bit of pace and movement. Doesn't seem to be able to get back as well as he could But when he first arrived before the injuries. Um, but he still made, I think, 11... Yeah, I think he still gained possession 11 times, which is almost double what anyone else did. So he still did his job and won the ball back at times. but um, And he was left totally exposed an awful lot of the time by Danny Sabas as well. Great pass for Aubameyang right at the end. It almost gave Arsenal the crucial second away goal. But still going to give Thomas Partey a five. Burn. Bukayo Saka gets a six. It was lively at Bukayo Saka. Certainly the standout of um, the, uh, well, I would say for his, but um, uh, the sort of inverted forwards, so to speak. But um, I'm going to class Pepe as a kind of striker because in that. But Saka gets a six for me. Odegaard and Smith Rowe both gets five. Just couldn't really get involved, especially Odegaard. Difficult night for him. And Nicolas Pepe, I'm going to give a seven for Pepe because he took his goal well, took the penalty well, stayed calm and man, real pressure um, and was a decent gave a decent performance throughout. Unlucky not to get the penalty in the first half when he initially was awarded one. It was ruled out by VAR for that handball. It was a handball, but it was a little bit unlucky there. It just sort of bounced over and hit it. But at least he played with a bit of an intensity. Pepe he tried to drive and get into the penalty area when he could. So I'm going to give him a seven. All right, everyone, that's it from me. Apologies for a depressing note on this video. Um, hopefully we can... Uh, all look forward to next Thursday and a much, much improved performance from Arsenal and the fact that they are still in the tie. So wherever you are around the world, please do enjoy your weekend. Like I said, this is going to be the last video you hear from me now until Tuesday because I will be joining in the social media blackout, not just on YouTube, but across all my social media channels. So I'm going to be going quiet from 3 p.m. today, but I will be back on Tuesday morning for you. Until then, have a good weekend. I'll speak to you soon.